things. This is a Micromark MM7967 triple spotlight. Uh, as you can see, it's a brass one. As you can see, it's quite dusty because it's quite old. It's uh, This has been in service in the house for about 18 years. And the reason it's on the desk is because it went bang earlier on. In fact, it went bang several times. I run this on a dimmer and as soon as you turn it up, there'd be a sn literally a snap, crackle and pop from one of the, the fittings. I thought it was a, a short on the bulb, which had gone anyway, so I changed the bulb for another bulb, which I knew was dead anyway, and that did exactly the same thing. So I took the bulb out, and at first it seemed okay, and then, later on when I tried it, again, snap, crackle, pop. So I've unplugged it from the ceiling and brought it back down. I then discovered one feature which may or may not be a problem, and one fault which is definitely a problem. I'll show you the what's gone, what had gone wrong to start with. Here is the is the fitting and you can see it's got a few scorch marks on here and this is the cable which went through and the wire has actually gone brittle and the insulation has broken and started to, started to go through. So I assume it was it was arcing back here. I assume it wasn't arcing to this but it could have been. It is very possible that the bits from there, and here's what's left of them, could have been arcing through this. It's hard to tell whether there's actually any, uh, any, anything, anything has arced to this. That's the fault. This leads me on to what may or may not be a problem. If it was to arc to this, would it have would it have popped? If it had just arced you know, live to, to this, and it wouldn't have. Now you can see this has got this connection here is an earth terminal in, in the middle here. It's attached to uh, a, a tab on here. So this is earthed. These, which are also metal, well let's check. One connection there and another connection on the same one just to test and see zero ohms as you'd expect because it's on the same metal. Let's test to one of these instead. So we attach to the to the brass around the edge to the same test. Completely open circuit. These aren't earthed. Here's the partially reassembled fitting. The mounting bracket at the back is mounted on plastic so it has no contact with the metal shroud. That's actually screwed through on a, on a mounting screw down there. But does that then permit the shroud to be fitted with no earth connection? If the wire came clean out of the terminal it is possible that rotating the spotlight on its base could bring the end of the wire into contact with the shroud. Does that mean then that this doesn't need to be earthed? Is that sufficiently insulated to not need earthing? Um, I don't know. I'm not the expert in that matter. So, so I thought I'd take a look at that anyway, and we'll see. I'm going to take these others apart. I don't put um, Could I put it back together? Maybe. Maybe not. So what I'll do now is I'm going to take these apart as well and see if there's been any sort of overheating on those as well. See if they're any closer to um, to failure. We'll see then whether it's worth actually changing these cables. Um, I'm not a big fan of Edison screw light fittings. As you can see, it's very easy for them to get jammed up. I'm going to turn this in both directions to get it to, to actually work. Oh, 
work its way out. So it's it's not that difficult to twist these, you know, so the, you know, the bulb will just twist off, either twist that, twist off that, or just shatter. So I'm not a fan of Edison screw. This one's gone a bit easier. I know I had to replace one of these uh, one of these sockets. We'll probably be able to see which one when I take it apart. Once again, the cables have gone very, very brittle. Just cut it out. Right, I've got one wire out. As you can see, this has also gone very dry. And brittle that's that's broken up there the other one I can't get out because the the head is rounded off on the screw uh, something else of interest here I don't know if you can see that terminal there see that screw you shouldn't be able to do that I can feel that cracking in there as I was as I was doing that. That's the screw. So let's take a look at the rest of the wire. And you can see, there we go, again, the wire on this. Remember, this has been in service, you know, in the evenings, late evenings, uh, as often as, as a bedroom light tends to get used um, for the past 18 years. And you can see that has gone There's some sort of over sleeve, I think. Yeah, they, they put, oh my God. There's what looks like heat shrink sleeving over, over the end there. Well, that's not gonna protect that. You can see that's just gone black in there and, and crumbly. And that's, that's part of the internal construction of the of the wire originally. I don't think it is. No, you can see there's another one there on the on the live. So top marks for craft design there. Let's get the last one out. And I'm not sure whether I'm like whether I'm gonna keep this now or whether it's time to change the fitting because the problem with this fitting is even with you know it's on a dimmer switch but it's it's a bit bright and because it's on a dimmer you'll struggle to get hold of uh, dimmable light bulbs to fit it now apart from actual uh, incandescents like this or uh, or this one so let's see. God, look at that. I'm going to cut the wire back here so you can see exactly condition of that. Out. Right. Um, right, okay, so that's loosened the the wires so I can get them out and put that to one side. I still don't know which one of those I replaced. I definitely replaced one of them. But I'm not sure which one. Okay, here we are again. Let's take the insulation back there, leaving us with, which, which way around, there we go. Heat shrink insulation over there, which is split. Wire's gone brittle there. Wire's gone brittle there as well. So that is basically a an arc across point. So that's um, I'm not sure whether whether to actually replace this now. I, I've got a choice here. I can either re, um, 
overhaul it, replace these ca these cables with something that's actually able to handle the temperature. You know, some actual high temperature um, temp high temperature wire, and possibly replace one of these. I'm not sure. Uh, it depends if I can get the terminal connect uh, terminals out again, or do I just replace the whole thing? Uh, I guess I'm going to have to go have a look online to see what's uh, see what's available to replace it. If you want to see what one of these looks like when it's actually in place, that's my other one. I guess I'll be replacing that as well. Uh, that's the same age as the other one, but it's it's seen less service because this this room has actually seen less service. But uh, given the condition of those wires, I think it might be time to time to replace that fitting altogether. So what's caused this? Is it due to poor choice of cable, or is it due to the use of incorrect bulbs? It's only ever been used with either 60 watt R80 spotlight bulbs, or these Cosnic 42 watt halogen versions. Do the connections on the halogens get much hotter? I don't know. I've not got any Cosnics to test as they popped years ago, but I do have this 50 watt Sylvania, so I can test that. The fitting's not going back on the ceiling, it's getting replaced. I'll keep part of it as you can see for testing Edison screw bulbs. Unfortunately I can't use all three as one of the screws on this one has worn threads as you saw earlier and the other one has snapped clean off. This means I can now do some bulb testing to see if there's a difference in base temperatures depending on the type of bulb being used. We've got a 60 watt Osram and a 50 watt Sylvania halogen which is an interesting design it's almost like a giant GU10 or MR12 halogen bulb. Let's hook up the thermal imaging camera and see what we get. I'll prop it sideways so the bulbs are in the same horizontal position they'd be in if they're on the ceiling. Although these won't get as warm as they would if they were surrounded by this. At least we'll get a relative idea of whether one is getting hotter than the other. So there is a difference. The halogen one did take longer to heat up, but it does seem to be slightly warmer, although there's, there's not much in it. Also the terminals are going to get hotter as well, although it's, it's, um, it's very difficult to actually see the terminals within the, uh, within the enclosure. So I haven't been able to get a proper temperature reading of those. Would other halogen capsule based bulbs heat them up more? I don't know. So if you've got one of these fittings or know someone who does, it's definitely worth getting it checked by an electrician, not just at the terminals in the base, but definitely at the terminals on each lamp holder to make sure the wire hasn't gone brittle. Anyway, I hope someone finds that useful. Stay safe. Thanks for watching.